How to Achieve Peace First, identify the processes for controlling conflict and war. It's really quite simple. The decider, as commander-in-chief for the Constitution, must want to go to war for whatever reason. So he lines up his financial support in Congress while selling why he needs war. After that, the Department of Defense is ordered to war, given some money, and they send the armed forces and hire out war support. Second, propose changes to weaken the war strategy. Maybe a constitutional amendment is possible to limit U.S. participation in war with certain conditions that challenge the authority of the president. Or a balanced budget amendment is proposed that requires extra taxes for the extra money needs. Share this with others and with the media. And fourth, unite behind the proposed changes to push for peace en masse while unseating the members of the monolithic world conspiracy responsible for the world's conflicts. We need to add recall to the people's powers to be able to unseat any federal employee and to be able to unseat conspirators. With the straightforward disclosure and ordering of simple facts, we have proven the existence of a widespread conspiracy that took over the U.S. government in an intelligence-based coup on November 22, 1963, and has evolved in the last 50 years to the present day where extreme conditions exist. Both political parties within the U.S. take turns blaming each other for runaway debt and neither does anything to stop it. The mad race toward national bankruptcy continues and is critically close to completion. I have only shown a glimpse of the conspiracy from the 1963 time frame and their connection to the presidential coup against Kennedy and the freely elected governments in general. Their force has been unabated and strengthened during the last 50 years continuing to guard the remaining secrets of their takeover and purpose. And it is clear that public acknowledgement through the media of the truth surrounding the JFK assassination is still being actively withheld. No major media has hammered home the truth of the Kennedy coup and its implications to the world. This is the biggest story of all time in the secular world and it is not being carried to every hamlet in the world. The media has failed to keep the citizenry informed on the real happenings of this conspiracy over time and the conspiracy's negative impact upon the people of the world. We need a free investigative and informative media to alert the American people about matters affecting their lives, their welfare, their economy, and any threats to their peace. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program, for from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence in the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. So we should add to our list the need for a free investigative, fully informative press and TV news that discloses threats to the people's freedoms, prosperity, and peace. Because we are not being fully informed and the monolithic conspiracy is forcing Uncle Sam to dig his own grave in debt. This debt is created by lowering the tax rates of those who can afford to pay taxes while increasing defense expenditures on borrowed money to perpetuate arms races. Borrowing escalated with George W. Bush to five to six trillion dollars while leaving a deficit legacy of 1.4 trillion per year. This directly followed the positive cash flow budget of Bill Clinton in the 1990s and was a direct result of decreased taxes for the rich and increased defense budgeting caused partially by bogus wars. Obama has not restored peace and order, but has increased the speed of the rush to U.S. failure. Working for U.S. failure is not a political position. 
It's treason. Out with the traitors. Any deficit makes the grave deeper, while any surplus starts filling in the grave slowly. We need to be filling up the grave to make the U.S. strong again. Yet no party, no administration, no Congress is proposing a budget surplus. They talk reduced deficits, which continue to increase the debt and make the problem grow. No one in Washington, D.C. is into the solution, a surplus budget.